Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on here? It's C. Genty. <laughs> C. Genty's back at it again. It's it's good to be back, guys. It's uh, been it's been a, uh, a little of a hiatus, but we're back at it. Um, we're live on Instagram. We're live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube. Uh, and we're, we're here to, to give you the news. We're here to to engage with what's going on in the country, particularly from a business perspective. I know it's the holidays. I know uh, a lot of folks are still out, uh, still digesting from Christmas uh, meals, still digesting from uh, eggnog, cremas, and whatnot. So it's all good uh, if we have a slightly lower number count. But nonetheless, we had to be here for the very last, um, uh, very last uh, Haiti Biz News show of the 2019 of the decade, <laughs> not just the year. But the last Haiti Biz News show of the decade, right? And so, and for those who are able to come in and watch it live, we do, do appreciate you. You know, those who are watching it live, don't hesitate. Drop your comments. You, your participation is going to make this uh, a good stream. Uh, and because it's not just one-sided, it's not CNN. We're just we're just jabbing towards the screen. We're we're here to have a conversation. Uh, in, in addition to engaging, and those who are watching it after the fact, always remember you can catch us live. Sundays, 11 a.m., uh, give or take 11 a.m. ish, <laughs> right? Uh, so, uh, again, you know, 11 a.m. Sundays for live Haiti Biz News Show for those watching after the fact. A lot of we got a lot of news to cover since we've been out for two weeks, uh, and I fully intend to engage everything that happened in of relevancy while we're away. So, strap in, uh, we have a, a really good show uh, ahead of us here, right? Uh, for those um, uh, coming in, I see a few folks on IG. What's up? What's up? I see a few folks right now. Judy Ducatel. What's up? What's up? Lizzie. What's up? What's up? You know, uh, good to see you guys uh, in the chat. You know, per usual, right? Quick, some quick announcements. Quick announcements. We got to got to get into those, right? Uh, we had a recent uh, YouTube CGNT, uh where we checked out Fubar. Where we checked out Fubar. In fact, I got to update the the uh, description in my comments after the stream, uh, but you'll be able to find that uh, in the the comments uh, afterwards where we went to FUBAR, one of the best uh, night life experiences uh, in the country, uh, located in Pitchonville. Uh, a little different, a little different for me. I kind of, I, I, I let loose. You, you can see your boys dance moves, <laughs> you know, uh, cutting loose a little bit. You know, because you know it's not about it's not it's not all work, 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 business, 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 right? You have to you have to go ahead and, and let loose, uh, relax, and and there's that aspect of it in Haiti, right, where you can, uh, you know, unwind, you know, enjoy a vibe, comme right? And and food bar is one of those places you can do that. It's one of those you know top notch spots when it comes to music, food, performances. There's always almost something always happening. It's one of those places you can you can go and and you know. You know, for a late night spot, you know, 10 o'clock onward, uh, you know that that's going to be a place where you can go, a place where you can have fun. And uh, I think I did a we did an OK job highlighting it, uh, but you got to go there for yourself. So do make sure you go next time in Haiti. Check out Food Bar, great weekend spot and uh, and do check out the video. Right. We also uh, let out a, uh, a, a rewind, actually. And I need, I need to add that as well. Uh, a rewind of uh let me make a quick note for myself uh, to add that rewind rewind and oh, i gotta make make a note of that right and what we did on the rewind uh we kind of just went through sights and sounds i mean i had a little more amb ambition uh to do the entire year and all the different things we do from droning haiti to driving haiti to even haiti biz news uh but time went away from us there uh while we were trying to do you know trying to get that together uh, in a timely fashion because uh, my media team also were, were going on on break as well and so we so we just focused instead on just sights and sounds and we went through for the entire year what we did uh and i gotta tell you i was very very satisfied with a lot, a lot of things we were able to cover you know from going out to the uh you know to provinces and um to uh, checking out uh the farm uh, haitian hillbilly's farm and uh, in addition, just, you know, the local spots here in, in the metro area in Port-au-Prince and Pitchellville. And, and, you know, I, I just I just want to say, you know, uh, it didn't feel 
like work, <laughs> you know, um, you know, looking back and, and seeing all the, the content we were able to produce uh, over this year, uh, it, it really felt as if it was just a natural part of of just being in the country. And um, and I do want to you know say hats off to again to my media team uh, that uh, day in day out uh, I deal with my uh, personality. Uh, which can be very, uh, I like that five minutes ago, but yeah, everything I just said, toss it out and do this. <laughs> Those guys having to deal with that all the time. Right. So, um, you know, hats off to my media team, uh, just consistently, you know, uh, dealing with myself and, and, and outputting incredible work. Right. Uh, and so, uh, they're certainly looking forward to a new year of that. And, and, uh, and it really, what I'm able to do is, 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 is totally, because of the folks uh, of you, you know, you guys who watch, you guys who share, and and God willing, you know, we're we're only getting started. Uh, we have a lot, a lot left to do. Uh, certainly, would like to formalize the ADBiz News, uh, make additional investments in you know some of the material we use, the equipment we have, and so we're looking to do all that. We're looking to do all that. And certainly, looking forward uh, to, to more formal partnerships with some brands, uh, some entities in the country. Uh, which would be very nice, um, but you know, we'll, we'll you know, we'll, everything will come naturally. You know, I'm not, I'm not one, you know, uh, <laughs> the little meme that was happening uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah, I'm so Haitian. I don't, I don't buy faces. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful translation, uh, but nonetheless, you know, everything that comes is going to come naturally, and uh, and with the right partners, and uh, so. But again, you know, I do appreciate you guys who watch, who share consistently. Uh, you know, this this has been our year, certainly. Uh, as always, we have Haiti Biz News, the website, uh, HaitiBizNews.com, HaitiBizNews.com, HaitiBizNews.com. In fact, where's my little ticker? Where's that? Why is that not showing? Okay, there we go. Right, HaitiBizNews.com, HaitiBizNews.com, HaitiBizNews.com. Right, that is certainly where. Um, even while I was away, I hope folks were using that. Hope folks were watching that uh, to stay in the know. Again, what we do on Haiti Biz News, we go to the interwebs. And we take, you know, all the information that's that's relevant to Haitian Haiti and business. Uh, we translate it to English, and, and then put it put it out there. Because one thing I, I I do, even before starting this, you know, online stuff that I do here has always been, you know, how do I stay connected? How do I stay in in trying to figure out the pulse of the country, what's going on in particular business? And I didn't really find a one place I can go to get all that information. Right? I was always having to go to three or four different websites. Uh, and so I was like, you know what, let me, let me just, you know, you know, I'm not one to see a problem and not do anything. Uh, so, uh, I, cr we created Haiti biz news, right. Dot com and, and no, no charge, you know, it's there. And, and certainly I always want to say, I do support the original websites, right. If you, you know, the articles that you see, uh, and you, if you see a particular site that's giving you really good information, you know, you visit them, right. Cause they, you know, they, I don't want to take away from their businesses. So, but, uh, but I did want to make it easier for folks to stay uh, knowledgeable, right? So do check out their websites uh, if, you, if you're finding a particular site very useful and, uh, right? But again, HaitiBizNews.com. And as always, uh, the folks who come in the stream right now, uh, do share the stream, right? Um, do share the stream uh, on, your, on your cross, your Facebook, across your WhatsApp. Let's get some more folks in here. Uh, because the, the quality of the, the newscast only improves the more people in here, the more people who are commenting. I read all comments on air. Uh, those who are asking questions, the conversations we have, uh, certainly I think are going to be value added. So the more people we can get in here, um, you know, the better show will be. So don't hit that share button before we get started here. Okay. So let's look through the, we got some messages already. I got Pierre Paul. Good to see you, brother. How are you? Um, so Judy, uh, we are going to get into how things are in Haiti. Don't worry. Uh, Pierre Paul says, uh, uh, okay. Pierre Paul was responding. Uh, good stuff. Uh, Lita, uh, Mijit, uh, says good morning. Anula, one by guy. Bootlegger says, uh, definitely good morning. Not happy new year just yet. We still got a few more days of 2019. You know, let's, let's enjoy those last few moments. Right. We got Nixon, dear, we'll see um, saying contact them. I mean, my, my information is underneath, right? Uh, you know, I have my email in the comments, so feel free and message me with with whatever you, you want to talk about, right? You got Shanmili uh, saying good morning. Good morning right back to you. 
Lizzie, um, uh, certainly. Uh, oh, God, I already yeah, said what's up already. Earlier, P Rex, certainly good morning. And then Fire Jackson, Fire Jackson, good morning. A lot of good to see a lot of folks that I know uh, in the chat. So, certainly always good to see you guys. Let's see who do we have. Well, what comments do we have going on in here? We have an IG, we have Baby Mouse 926. First time I'm seeing you. Uh, how did you overcome the adversity moving to Haiti as Haitian American? Great question. Great question. And then, for, and then she also says, I want to visit and constantly uh, getting scared out of coming. All right. And and we got Chingy 305. Chingy 305. Uh, one guy who is uh, much appreciated to see in this chat, despite how ungood looking he looks. <laughs> he, inside joke. He knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> But uh, for Baby Mouse, just to, to answer your question, uh, just to answer your question, Baby Mouse, um, you know, I, I, I tell folks uh, the process of, of any, doing anything in Haiti needs to happen slowly. Um, you need to, you know, my transition happened over a course of a year where I try to go back every month and uh, and reengage the country culture, not only engage, reengage it culturally, right, but you know the language. You know, right? So engage the language, engage the culture, engage the personalities. You know, everything. Everything is, is very different. No matter even if you grew up in Haiti, when you leave uh, for so many years, you come back. You know, there's you know, Haiti has its own orbit, right? And that's really the best thing I could advise you uh, is to uh, don't don't just wake up one night and just say you're moving out there. Uh, it has to be uh, a, a intellectual, intelligent, strategic decision uh, that you should do slowly. Uh, Haiti isn't for everybody, you know. It's it's you know Haiti is is Haiti is you know uh, a lot of a lot of his reputation is is certainly earned, <laughs> right? Um, so, and I don't advise anybody to to move out there. Out of my opinion, uh, I, if, folks, if folks have decided to move to the country out of their own opinion, I'm here to help with that. All right. But uh, I'm not here to, to, to be the convincer because at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, <laughs> right, uh, I don't want you to come back to see. See, John, see, Zimui, you told me to go. You told me. <laughs> I didn't tell you to do anything. I'm just saying, I just said, if you decided, you know, I'm here to, I'm here to help with that, you know, that, that mindset and, and, and to maximize your chance of success. That's what we're, that's why we do everything here. Uh, but Haiti is, is a difficult environment. There is no way around that, right? Uh, so I, I hope that answered the question, Baby Mouse, nine two six. Certainly appreciate that. All right. Um, okay, so let's let's get into the news. Uh, we have a lot of folks coming into the cast. Certainly good to see a lot of folks. Let me just shout out a few folks here. Mark Allen, good to see Mark. Good to see Mark uh, in here. Uh, shout out to Mark. Uh, first time I'm seeing him in the chat. Of course, we're going to be talking about a bunch uh, very shortly uh, here. But Mark Allen is the uh, head of. Uh, heading out uh, uh, the, the head of Bunge uh, and uh, doing a lot of great stuff with his incubator out there in Delma. But we'll be talking about that shortly. Again, good to see you, Mark. Wap Mini 99. Uh, let's see. You plan networking and reviewing with her. You know, you know, everything's on the table, right? Everything's on the table. Uh, Wap Mini's asking, uh, do I plan to do any networking interviews? Everything's on the table, right? And um, we certainly uh, um, are open to you know, you know, collaborating, especially in this coming year. Right. And Jimmy Latouche, Latouche is certainly good to see you. Good morning. Emmanuel M. Christian, uh, M. Christian. Good morning. Sammy Lammy. Sammy, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hope everything's well with you. Right. And we have uh, Ish is crazy, crazy. You know, first time I'm seeing you in there. Uh, good morning. And uh, all right. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So let's just jump in. Let's jump into it. Let's jump into the news. Uh, for this day, and again, we have a lot of stuff to cover, right? And so we'll probably take them in, in, in chunks before I re-engage with the comments. So so the first bit of news, of course, we gotta gotta get over the, you know, discuss what's going on in a in a, in a political sense, uh post-protest. Um, and isn't too much to talk about per se. We have Jovenel uh talking, uh meeting with uh opposition from the Kinam Accord, um, Joseph Lambert and Eric Jean Baptiste. Of course, if you remember. Uh, that there's two accords. There was the Marriott Accord, which you know I, I so happened to have been fly on the wall there to see how that happened, and 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 that was a part of the opposition that really wants Jovenel out. 
um, and and want to completely change the system that exists, including the Constitution potentially. Uh, and they already have a provisional president uh, in waiting. Uh, they're working with the uh, ju judiciary court of cassation uh, to transition him out. Uh, they're, but they they can't do anything until uh, Jovenel uh, decides to uh, resign formally. So. Um, but the Kinam Accord was uh, by a branch of other opposition leaders who decided uh, that uh, there should be a way forward, and that way forward uh, would include uh, systematic reforms, but more importantly, also include and keep uh, President Moise in power, right? In addition to other things, for example, allowing some uh, parliamentarians to continue their mandate beyond. Um, what was constitutionally advised, right? Uh, so uh, Jovenel met with the, the Kinam Accord members. Uh, as, to be clear, the Marriott Accord members continue to reject calls for dialogue. Uh, they continue to demand um, uh, without uh, any, uh, any, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, there is no, first step without the, the resignation of President Moise, but it certainly seems with the calming of the country, uh, the likelihood of that uh, is less and less, right? And additionally, uh, there were some questions about President Moise uh, attending the Gwenaive ceremonies. Um, and then for those who don't know, the independence of Haiti was announced, the independence of Haiti was announced uh, in Gwenaive, Haiti. Uh, and so every year the president of Haiti uh, goes there to uh, welcome in and start the ceremonies related to our Haitian Independence Day. Uh, there were some questions on whether he was he was going to be able to travel, but from all sources, uh, he is going to make it. And in fact, right before we aired, we got on air, I was seeing a, a cast from, uh, I believe, Tele IT or one of the or one of the uh, national uh, Haiti streams um where Jovenel was walking the streets right president Moise was walking the streets uh so it seems as if uh, he was able to make it which is a tremendous blow to the opposition uh because they were certainly looking to have him not attend that and beyond that in terms of the conditions of the country i continue to hear i, I personally I i'm for the holidays i am out of haiti you know, you can tell that just by the background. You, you got those who follow know <laughs> how the in Haiti office looks like. Um, um, but from all accounts, um, from my business managers, things are operating per usual. For family, for folks who are there, uh, things are operating per usual with pockets of instability. Um, uh, but the ability to travel across country uh, is um, back to normal conditions, which which doesn't necessarily mean things are good, <laughs> but certainly they're not at a complete impasse as they were before, right? Uh, there's in the uh, Pianash is in uh, Pauli Tour, or they're fighting very aggressively uh, to keep sp specific arteries open, uh, arteries uh, in the south related around Matissa area, uh, and then of course the north, the road that leads to uh, the resort coast certainly are being <clears throat> aggressively fought over uh, and trying to maintain control. So to the question of whether it's safe to come to the country, which is like the number one question I get uh, from, from uh, the diaspora, uh, is it safe to come to Haiti? Uh, and I would say, you know, for the first time I had, for the first time in three years, a uh, few months, about last month, for the full month of, of the lease, uh, late October through a good amount of November, uh, at least maybe all October, I was telling folks actually, you know, hold off, hold off on any travel or and coming until we have a certain degree of temperature change on the ground. And I can tell you, as I'm sitting here today, uh, that temperature change has happened, uh, and I certainly would greenlight anybody uh, coming. And so anyone who's asked me, uh, you know, since last week, if it is a place to to go right now. I say yes, yes it is. Uh, you know there is um, certain you know, pieces restored, uh, roadblocks, which have been the reason why I was telling folks not to come. Because again, you can get into the country, but going out and doing stuff would have been very difficult. Uh, that has come to uh, a, a definite stop. Um, though again, pockets are still happening, but 
uh, just pockets. It's not the complete <laughs> um, uh, citywide, countrywide closures, right? So I hope that answers some of the questions folks were having related to that, right? Uh, so moving on, you know, I, mean, I don't like doing anything politics, right? But we do, we do have to touch base on that at the beginning of the cast, kind of like eating bro eating your broccoli. <laughs> so that's done, right? So let's focus on uh, more important national affairs and business affairs. The first news story I do want to talk about, and I don't think I've really talked about this uh, while uh, on air. Uh, I think I mentioned it very briefly, maybe an episode or two ago, relates to the ID cards, the national ID cards of Haiti um, uh, have, uh, will no longer be acceptable starting December 31st. Now, what does that mean and impact? Now it doesn't impact anyone necessarily from the diaspora per se, but it does impact millions upon millions of people in the country. So what happened, right? What happened? So the national ID cards, uh, uh generation that we've had recently, uh, were, uh, uh there was a big push and particularly related to the Bahamas and, uh, and Dominican Republic, uh, demanding that, um, before they started, they really aggressively started their national deportation programs that um, I identification was provided to citizens of Haiti and not just their passports. Uh, so uh, under Matsili, uh, we had um, signed a, 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 an agreement with a private institution out of Europe uh, to create national ID cards and, and those cards began being issued. Uh, though that agreement was ruled, um, uh, not valid. Um, and for reasons I'm, I'm still, we're still not totally clear. Um, I'm hearing a few different things, a few related to who signed it, uh, when it was signed, uh, and some of the things that were being transported information wise were being transported out the country, which the, the wasn't allowed per, uh, regulation. Right. Um, but the reasons, you know, notwithstanding, uh, that agreement was rendered, rendered invalid and that information, okay. That information, um, and all the information from, from the, from the ID numbers to the fingerprints, to the signatures, everything has, was kept with that private institution, uh, abroad. And, and we've had to sign a new agreement with a new company and people are being, having to be issued new SINs. And again, what a SIN is, it's, it's, so there's two ID numbers in Haiti. Uh, there's the NIF, which is more tuned to sort of a, a social security number. And a SIN is, um, uh, well, the, the formal SIN, it's, it's your, your voter ID, right? It's your voter ID. Um, and that's what the national identification card uh, really is. It's a it's an it's an electoral card that allows you to vote, in particular, but also serves as as uh, an ID for you to go bank to to, to bank. Uh, it serves as uh, for legal you know if you're going to sign a legal document, you have to present I you know some uh, state tenant ID that serves as that as well. And uh, so it's a massive inconvenience to have. One CIN, bear in mind, for example, if you open a bank account, you would have to use potentially your SIN. And now having that change to something else, right? I mean, it's almost equivalent to having your social security number changed to kind of have that context uh, you know, correct, which is a massive dizzard, <laughs> as you can imagine, um, and imagine convenience to millions of people who woke up, uh, and this was, announced, this was announced back in June of last year, June or July, that um, the, the current electoral cards were going to be uh, rendered invalid uh, and uh, a huge massive push to for folks to you know take time out their days to deal with you know the bureaucracy that is that is Haiti uh, and 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 so to, to some credit there's been massive investment in uh, creating new under under Jovenel uh, create uh, new bureaus and new offices across the country um, to help uh, with that process, but certainly it's not enough. Uh, I, I can tell you out of personal experience uh, going there because I, I, I had my old electoral card, right, as well. And now I had to also, even though I have other ID, so I could have went without it technically. Um, I do have a driver's license, and, and uh, which is just about as good. Uh, but still, I like having all my ducks in a row. And I certainly wanted, uh, looking forward to vote 
uh, whenever that happens in the country. So I, I had to get that uh, in order. And me going myself, I can tell you uh, the amount of uh, people who are there, hundreds. I went to, went to the one off uh, Delma 31, Delma 31, there's an office. Is it 31? Yes, Delma 31. And I can tell you the, there was hundreds of, hundreds of people there, right? And it took me two visits. Each visit uh, took me three hours, right, to, to get through and, and get my ID. And that's me, right? You know, um, <laughs> and I knew people who were there uh, for m many more hours. Uh, I knew uh, people who were there who came many more times to get their IDs and heard myself people saying, I've been I've been coming you know, every other week for four months and I haven't received my sin. And every time I come, they say it's not ready. Um, I, the window between me, you know, applying for the new card and coming back was it was about yeah, four months. It, 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 I, so even though they said it would be ready next week, but we knew that wasn't going to be the case, right? Um, but it took me four months to actually go, go back. I probably would have came back sooner, but of course, given all the things that were happening in the country, uh, the offices were closed for a good amount of that, to be quite honest with you, right? So, so uh, again, the last date for the ID cards are, are December 31st. Some of the implications, though, of course, is that with uh, many folks unable to get their national ID cards. It really puts the democratic process in peril, even though there isn't uh, going to be elections per se, but it, it certainly puts a, a, uh, a, um, uh, a roadblock to um, participation because, again, there's a lot of people who probably won't even bother. There's some, there's some people who probably won't even who just decide to sit it out altogether, um, given how difficult it is to deal with the state. Uh, of Haiti to do anything. And I personally know a few folks who said, yeah, I'm not, I'm good. You know, I'm just going to ride it out and, uh, and just not, you know, do anything that we would require it. Right. And so, um, uh, so that's, that's that new story. Uh, it's important that folks know that's happening and that's a thing and, 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 and an incredible disorganized mess um, to have again, national ID card, and, and then overnight be told that your national ID card isn't valid uh, and you have to create a new one. And, uh, and I've, the numbers, um, in fact, just the very next day after I got mines, I had the, to, to drive by um, the, the, the bureau, the center where I got my card. And I remember I told you there was hundreds. The very next day, because like, there's a radio actually, the, the Haitian state actually started to go on the radio and say, hey guys, you know, the deadline is December 31st. For those who don't know, you have to go get your, your ID. It swelled to thousands, right? It, was, it looked like a scene out of a you know disaster movie, right? I mean, thousands were burgeoning around this facility the very next day, right? And so that's that new story. It's important that you folks know, understand what's going on from that regard. And, and check on, if you have any family out there, do, do check on them uh, as it relates to their ID cards. Uh, do make sure they they know uh, that the national ID that uh, previous is is no longer going to be valid starting December thirty first, and and what does that mean if you're sending money to your families um, when they go to Western Union when they go to Com Transfer they go to Uni Transfer uh, they will not they they will not I mean, legally they're not supposed to accept the old national ID card as ID anymore they're only supposed to accept the new uh, ID cards for example so again if you have family out there I do let them know. Uh, they have to, you know, um, get their ID cards redone, right? Right. So let's uh, take a quick break here and, and just see. Let's see. Let's see what folks are saying in the chat. Let's see what folks are saying in the chat. Um, let's see what folks are saying in the chat. We got uh, Daniel Dodard. Uh, when the book is when is the book coming out? Working on it. <laughs> Working on it. Certainly, the goal is twenty twenty. Um, you know, the thing is when I first announced that, you know, we're, we're working on the book and folks who don't know, uh, the, I'm working on a book called 101 ways, uh, to make money in Haiti, um, um, full working title. Let me, let me, let me read it out to you. 101 ways to make money, uh, in Haiti, lucrative business ideas, inspiring success stories, and in interesting business opportunities for forward thinking entrepreneurs. Uh, I, I didn't realize that. <clears throat> I really said 101, <laughs> and the problem is I'm not I'm not just writing something and just talking out my butt, but it's it's a researched 
piece, you know, as my economics degree would not allow me to write anything that doesn't isn't fortified with statistics, hard stats, hard facts, hard research. Uh, and so uh, since, it's, since it's not a fiction book, I think it was fiction, I could have wrote a lot quicker, but because it's nonfiction and it's, and it's uh, effectively a research book, uh, in addition to being a guide, uh, uh, firsthand sort of account as well, um, uh, it's taking a bit longer, right, uh, to do it and do it the right way. But it's, it's being worked on, I can tell you. Thanks. Keep it. Keep me earnest. Keep asking about it. <laughs> Shame the devil <laughs> into making me complete that book. But I promise you, I am taking time each day to to write. So thanks for that, Daniel. Uh, Judy Jackson. Uh, let's see. Do you have a wholesaling list? No, I do not. No, I do not. Um, but that's a. But you have to get a little more specific for me. Like wholesaling, what exactly? Um, Let's see where and Haiti might come to support one day. Do, do, do. Uh, thank you. you guys are having an internal conversation there, which is great. That's all good. Lita Midget says, I uh, was sitting watching a video of him sitting, at people answering questions. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but the issue, issues, I mean, the security, poverty administration, he didn't address. I think he's talking about uh, President Moise, um, potentially in Guanaive or just in general. Okay. Uh, what information? Uh, about it, can you send us uh, the spent funds of Haiti to change the state? What information? Now, so there's an app actually that exists, and let me take a look. There's an app that you can download right now. It's in French, though. Uh, be aware, it's in French. Um, where is it? Let's see. Where did I put that thing? Where would it be? Uh, where Where is that? Where is that app? I was just. Ah, here it is. There it is. Uh, it's called Haiti Budget. If you literally type Haiti Budget. Uh, in the, at least the, the Google Play Store, I can't speak with I, for iPhone, but in the Google Play Store, um, uh, you'll find a document sheet that I know for the last budget, I haven't checked if, if the most recent, but it hasn't changed actually. It hasn't changed because it, it, nothing's been voted in, right? But um, uh, um, you can take a look at some of the budgetary items, at least, that have been approved. Um, and that should answer some of your questions, Lita. But a lot of the stuff that's been happening, specifically to Caravan Changement, uh, there hasn't necessarily been a specific state budget line item for it, which has been obviously a point of uh, oppositional contention that uh, money's being spent that wasn't approved by the state parliament, right? Necessarily, specifically, right? Um, he's using uh, funds from. Uh, parts of different ministries, uh, departments uh, to do that activity, right? Which again, uh, technically, constitutionally, isn't necessarily appropriate to do, all right? A great question. Do check out that app. Uh, it is pretty useful. Haiti, the Haiti, uh, I think I said it already, but uh, in fact, let me let me type it in the chat just folks, so just so folks could know. Uh, again, that the name of that app again is the Haiti Budget app, Haiti, Haiti Budget app in the Google Play Store, right? Okay. Great questions. Great questions. This is why I love participation. You know, it allows me to bring in other aspects uh, and, and give it to you guys. Great, great stuff. Let's see. Uh, some conversations going back and forth there. Um, how are they going to produce mass ID cards when they can't even give people that? Extra? Well, they're one and the same. They're one and the same. The ID cards we're referring to are electoral cards, and the, and they're they've been doing it. I mean, it's just, it's just slow going, um, uh, it's slow going, but but it's been happening. Again, I have my uh, new uh, national ID card. It's just a massive inconvenience to have to do, and of course the um, um, opportunity for incidental corruption, right? With folks trying to pay to cut the line, pay to get their ID cards uh, expedited, of course, is happening. And I, I was seeing it, you know, having Zim with my two eyes seeing that happen. Um, so, you know, that's, that is what it is. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see, why are they doing this now? Should have waited until uh, after New Year's and people are sending money over. Yeah, that's, but it's been announced. It's been announced. It's been announced. Uh, Lead Axe, uh, Lead Image Axe. Why? Why are they doing it now? They should have maybe pushed back the deadline. But it's been announced since June, so over six months. Uh, but of course, an extension should be, certainly be considered, given that um, there's been a uh, you know the, the crisis in the country being what it is, right? Um, a good question. 
Um, let's see, goods, wholesaling for lists of products and services. Uh, so the way I can answer this, uh, Judy Jackson, is is to say if there's a particular product that you like, for example, if you, know, you, you like prestige, you like um, um, what's the coffee I drink a lot? Uh, uh, what's the name of that coffee? Um, oh, but I know Selecto makes it. Selecto makes it, um, right? Selecto Coffee, for example. You can reach out in, individually there's to the to the company, and 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 there isn't a company that isn't going to say no to a large bulk order, right? <clears throat> and I think these companies do have um, resources and relationships in place to get that product to you, right? So, um, you know, it really depends on your familiarity with products and, and, and knowing that a quick Google search will get you uh, uh, to the company's website and, and be able to email that company directly. Um, but whether or not there's a main distributor that exists or a list that exists, I'm not aware of, it. but certainly don't let that stop you from uh, making any needed um, uh, um, um, purchases uh, of Haitian products. That's really that's how Haiti changes, right? Um, all right, so let's let's keep let's keep going there. Uh, next new story has to do with ease of doing business rankings, right? From 179 overnight over 190 versus 182, right? We, we're up three places. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> party. <laughs> you know, Haiti last year was 182 out of 190. Now Haiti is 179 out of 182. We did it. We did it, guys. We're up three places. <laughs> I'm being facetious. Obviously, I'm being I'm being cynical. I'm being sardonic, right? But um, and, and by the way, the reason why we're up three places has been uh, specifically one byline: access to credit information. Uh, we jumped over 34 points um, from that perspective, um, which uh, that when that subcategory is part of the larger category of uh, credit to, uh, or access uh, to credit was, that was a larger category. Right. And yeah, everything else has stayed relatively the same at times it takes to do business cost of doing business. Um, you know, corruption involved in business, um, the amount of bureaucracy involved, electricity, access to infrastructure, right? including electricity, uh, water uh, roads, uh, all of those things have, if not stayed the same, or went worse, right? Political stability, all those things that affect uh, the ease of doing business, all have stayed the same or gotten worse um, by a point or two. And where again, the biggest thing that changed was the access to credit information, right? So uh, again, I, I don't, I don't, and I share this to make it clear that. You know, people come on and, and, and view me as somebody who is just naive about Haiti and, and naive about the opportunities in the country. Um, I've been told this to my face. You know, Chris, you're, you're naive to think business is going to change the country uh, the way you think. Uh, and, you, and usually that comes from people who want me to engage politically. Right? They want me to, to make Haiti Biz News become political business, political news, a Haiti political news show. Um, because in their minds, the only thing that can be done is a political response in the country. And my thought process has always been, you know, Haiti, we've been fighting a political war since our independence amongst ourselves. Um, a quick history lesson to find out and, and just see how many presidents we've had and how long they've lasted in office um, uh, will tell you we've been fighting a political struggle without any results for over 200 years. Uh, and, and my thought process is, why don't we try business first? You know, let's try that, something we've never done before. Let's, let's focus on getting folks jobs, opportunities, um, enrichment, wealth. And then let's see how that can trickle across the economy and trickle across the political realm. Right. But part of that too, is that, uh, I don't, I don't sugarcoat nothing. It's not, it's not easy to do business in the country and stats like these where we're one seven nine one out of one ninety, makes it very, makes it very clear. It's not easy. Right. But it still needs to be done and it still can be done. I'm doing it. <laughs> right. I'm here in the country. I have 12 employees. I have great relationships with you know large companies abroad. Uh, I'm looking to add additional uh, business units in the coming year and years, uh, looking for additional partners 
um, to work with. And I'm doing it. And I'm doing it. And I know other people are doing it. Because when you come in, in flying to the country, Haiti isn't devoid of businesses, right? You, you know, you're not fighting in the jungle for your meat. You, you go into a grocery store, right? Um, you know, you're, you're, when, you, when it comes time to buy equipment, it may be a delico. The fact that you have to have a generator, that's annoying. But where do you buy your generator? It's not, you're not shipping it in yourself. There's stores that exist where you can buy it. If you furniture, right? There's furniture stores that exist, right? Uh, one new store we're going to talk about is there's a, a car um, shop that's opening somewhere. And we're going to talk about that. But you, you're not, you know, those businesses exist, right? And the fact that they exist shows that there is avenue for business in the country. And so let's talk about how to do it. And that's what the whole show and whole concept of CGNT is about, right? And, and but instead, let's just focus on that. Let's focus more exclusively on that, that how to overcome it, because people are overcoming it. And then once we've gotten a degree of economic power, right? And let's see then how we can work together amongst those who are successful to uh, to change the dynamic in the country for the betterment of not only just the business community and business environment, but the people, more importantly, the people itself. And that's that's my mindset, right? And but again, it's certainly difficult. Uh, and the you know I, when I read one seventy nine out of one ninety, I don't necessarily get discouraged. Uh, it just makes it very clear why what we're doing is so important and exists. Um, it's to share how to overcome the difficult business environment that exists and to celebrate those who are being successful. you yeah, right. So, so that's that new story, right? Uh, let's keep, let's keep pushing forward. Lots of new stories to talk about fund distribution, right? Uh, to increase rice production. This now, this is a story I, I, I wish we could talk about more. In fact, um, it's, it comes on the heels of, um, last new story related to Taiwan and rice production, which which was related to the fact that they were donating over 200,000 tons of rice, which uh, certainly gave me a gag reflex. I, I find th that sort of news absolutely disgusting, uh, truly, because when we have an Artibunit region, which which used to in the 80s uh, feed the entire country, and and since then uh, it's only able to produce about 17% uh, of the demand that Haiti uh, has for rice, and we're having to accept free uh, rice. Um, there is no country that can survive uh, long term without having control and able to feed its people, right? And you're when you're depending on donations to feed a population, um, that never is going to end well, right? But this new story isn't of that vein. It's of the vein of what I wish I could report all the time, which is uh, Taiwan is. Uh, provided as providing two point three million dollars to uh, provide seeds to farmers in the Atabini region, the Okai and Okap region, uh, to help them with increased food production. In addition to other things, for example, helping with uh, soil preparation and irrigation. In addition to uh, helping uh, with uh, very local projects, for example, there is a project, a Marlon Marlon. A hydroelectric dam uh, that was announced last year and uh, is still in construction and it's supposed to help with uh, regional power generation uh, in the northern part of Haiti. Um, and so, you know, so those are the new stories we like talking about. Um, uh, so in particular, so this, the, the rice seeds, uh, we're looking at 200 or it's our 20,000 tons of rice seeds um, to be distributed, with most of that going to the Arti Bonit region, specifically the Estere region of our so we're, we're, we're very happy to report that uh and we will keep an eye on that uh, and certainly hope we can announce uh, or share more stories like that because that is exactly what haiti needs we don't need free stuff from the international community we need things that will help us become self-sufficient right we don't need fish we need help in le in learning how to fish right and, and that where that is where the the focus and aid needs to be right um, so hats off, and, and we're very happy to report report that. Other good news uh, relates to export production uh, are in textiles. Uh, we're seeing we've seen uh, surprisingly 13% uh, increase for Q4 of uh, this past fiscal year for textiles. You know uh, that's textiles, clothing, right? 13% uh, 
for a total of 1.1 uh, billion in total exports for Q4 2018 2019 which is uh, unexpected, truly, um, given that there were so much uh, difficulty happening in the country. Um, that is incredibly good news. And, and of course, for those who don't know, uh, Haiti is a part of uh, HOPE, uh, which HOPE Law, which is a uh, hemispheric uh, agreement of the United States to allow certain countries to enjoy certain benefits, in particular as it relates to Haiti. Haiti is uh, able to, uh, in effect, bring in duty free uh, for certain clothing items um, imported directly from Haiti. And of course, to be eligible, uh, those clothing items must be fully assembled or knitted in Haiti. Um, and the fabrics generally, though, the catch, the fabrics have to come from America. <laughs> so of course, you know, you know every country sh you know, should do things that are, you know, some direct benefit to, to themselves, right? And so that's the sort of catch that those initial fabrics sh should come to some part from Haiti, uh, from America. But nonetheless, um, the the net the net export effect has been one point one billion dollars uh, for Haiti. Um, and of course, that doesn't necessarily mean great news for the industry itself. Uh, bear in mind that uh, overnight uh, in in May, <clears throat> uh, the industry did see uh, an increase of uh, about thirty to forty percent. <clears throat> excuse me, of their uh, base costs uh, increase uh, with the parliament passing a, a national wage increase law uh, for uh, many folks across the sector, but in particular, the uh, textile workers, right? In these, in the large free zone industrial parks where a lot of these, a lot of these, these operations exist, which certainly is um, needed um, the w daily wage for a lot of these workers are uh, only uh, around typically 500 good or so a day, right? So certainly we're not uh, disparaging of that, but when your largest export sector uh, increases overnight, 30, 40% increase uh, in, in one of their big base costs, that is certainly a part of concern uh, and certainly is going to slow investment, uh, especially when uh, you're not doing anything to help with their uh, with their other aspects of business, in particular, it still is hard to register in the country. It still is hard to file your taxes in the country. It still is hard to uh, operate in the country. Um, security remains an issue, um, and so uh, we're all for the worker. But what about the entrepreneur? What about the business? You know, what are you doing to help in the business environment, right? Um, but, but that's none of that's good news. And certainly we, 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 we like getting that unexpected good news, uh, when we have a, an important sector in the, of the Haitian economy doing better than expected. All right. Let's take a pause real quick and see what folks are saying here. IG is relatively quiet. Um, I just relatively quiet. Uh, let's see. We got baby mouse nine, two, six saying, uh, to, to, to we like to, to to own property out there in order to have places to go and visit. Now, now um, I have. If you go to my Anu Palais series, uh, I have about three segments in there that relates to buying property in Haiti, and one in particular with uh, Haitian attorney uh, Giovanna Bernard, where we um, literally spent a good amount of time about the entire process of purchasing a home. Uh, in the country. So if you haven't seen that, do take some time, check that video out. Um, and, and when it comes to, once you've done that, uh, there are plenty of um, real estate companies that exist. Feel free and DM me. I can, I can, I can refer you know, two or three that I've heard have done very good jobs in, in, in working with people. Um, and so feel free and, and, and do that. Um, but I think I, would advise anybody, uh, when it comes to doing and purchasing property in, in, in Haiti is to do it very carefully, do it very slowly and do it with a lawyer. <laughs> right. Um, because, um, you know, it's, 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 you know, the Haitian property structure of the country, it's, it's basically the wild, wild west. And, uh, there's no sugarcoating that. And it's very, one of the most difficult things you can do in the country is to buy land. And so you very much should do it very carefully uh, and very prudently. And it shouldn't be done with emotions. It should be, should be done very tactically and very carefully, right? Um, but again, do check out the uh, the series I've had 
uh, with Giovanna Menard, uh, on my new pilot series on my YouTube uh, playlist, right? Very informational. And I even myself, I go back and rewatch that from time to time, right? All right, so that was IG. Let's see what folks are saying uh, on YouTube and Facebook. Let's see here. Let's scroll up. Let's scroll up. Okay, let's scroll down. Let's see. Where was I? Okay, here we go. We got Sincere Supreme. Hello. It's all good. It's all good. You know, if you come in late, that's fine. That's fine, right? So uh, he asks, uh, sincerely asks, hey, is it better to live in the north or southern part of Haiti? My response is, you live where it makes sense and where you want to live um, uh, as it relates to anywhere, you know, in the world, right? Um, you know, I think what should be, what should drive your decision should be, you know, do you have a support network, right? You know, to live wherever you're going to live, you know, do you have some family, do you have some friends? Um, you know, why are you choosing to go one place or versus another? Um, and that would be my thing. You know, do you have an ancestral connection? You know, is your mom or dad from one region uh, of the country or another? Um, you know, that really is what should drive your decisions, to be quite honest. Um, when it comes to uh, as close to first world things um, that you're, you may be used to as someone coming into the country, um, certainly Port-au-Prince and Cap Haitien will give will afford you the most um, in terms of internet speed, in terms of uh, overall uh, access to electricity, uh, infrastructure, uh, those two cities will, will give you the most of that. Um, but other cities that aren't as aren't too bad, Jacques Mel, Okai, uh, are also um, relatively, um, you know, okay infrastructure. If you're looking to move to those cities as well, um, and of course, if you're looking to move further out into the provinces, just be aware, you know, you will deal with genuine third world things to to consider, right? Um, but yeah, that's the best way I can answer that. You know, it's, it's, there's not a, a best or worse. It's simply, you know, why are you moving there in the first place? Do you have familiar connection? What support systems do you have? It should be driving that, that sort of decision making, right? Daniel Dordard asks, uh, can there be a Haitian call center for French speaking companies? Uh, so yes, is the short answer. Um, I've, uh, worked with, um, because part of what I do, I do outsourcing, and, and uh, part of what I do is uh, call centers, right? And I have a few relationships with uh, companies in America and in France uh, and in Canada, um, you know, working with them. And 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 the thing I can tell you that um, I've had one relationship with a French company, and it, it didn't it didn't go so well. I, I found that um, you know what they say about the French is true uh, when it comes to elitism and their language and uh, the French speak, as, as you can imagine, the French speak French in a very particular way in the country that people living outside the country do not necessarily uh, write like, speak like, and, 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 and there's not a particular vernacular, which is very, I mean, those who live in America, right? You'll know a dude in Miami doesn't speak English and has certain slang and certain vernacular, uh, very different from a dude in, in, in DC or New York Right, a dude in, in in Miami speaks English. And I say, dude, like you know, dude, like, like, you know, speaks English, you know, very differently from a guy in Atlanta <laughs> or even California. Very small little mannerisms. Um, those mannerisms are are expanded quite a bit uh, between Haiti and in, in France. Right, uh, and I can tell you, uh, the experience we've had working in, in, with with a French customer it was not very good, and that's something that's. Uh, f f the f you know, f France has to change, and one reason why you know France, uh, the French as a language is on the way out, because English doesn't English there isn't that sort of snobism that exists um, between English speakers. Now you, you might be annoyed when the Indian picks up, you, you know, you hear you know a Pakistani or Indian person on the other line trying to sell you something, <laughs> right? But but folks are generally a lot more accepting of of different style of English and accents in English versus versus France, France, uh, French in France. The opportunity certainly would exist on paper, but I can tell you out of experience, uh, I'm not sure how you overcome the uh, French snobism of, of how other people speak their language who aren't in their country. So, so that's a personal comment, uh, Daniel, uh, that I can give you that on paper, it's, it's, it's a great 
opportunity, but I'm not too sure how it would work. So J Jetty, Jetty Jackson says, I can drop shipping items from Haiti work. Um, Axe our boy, Johnson Napoleon. <laughs> Johnson Napoleon has been a big advocate of drop shipping. Um, he's had many, many casts of, of about drop shipping. Uh, I personally don't see how it, it works in Haiti. Um, uh, and I don't think even the little bit I've seen when Johnson Napoleon talks about it, uh, usually, uh, relates to partnering with somebody in another country, um, to do the drop shipping for you. Uh, for example, partnering with someone in America, uh, and they, and the product is already, uh, and they order the product to an American address and then, and then immediately ships it out to the person who ordered it. Um, but drop shipping doesn't work if you're, if it's a person only in Haiti. Uh, it's a way to make money if you're Haitian, but doesn't necessarily help the Haitian economy per se directly, right? <clears throat> so, but again, I haven't really explored that topic too much because I don't see, um, you know, the, the shipping things in the country is difficult. Shipping things out of the country is even more difficult. Um, the infrastructure just isn't there to do drop shipping in the, in the manner that um, it, it's easy and profitable, right? Um, in countries only, right? So I, I think I hope I can answer your question there, Judy Jackson. You know, you know, the short answer is go to Johnson Napoleon. <laughs> he has a whole thesis related to drop shipping, and he was a firm believer of that working to help enrich uh, native Haitians. So do take a look at that, right? Um, let's see. Yeah, the, yeah, that's right. You know, business equity, you know, for a lifetime. That's right. We have Ivry Art Sensene. No difficile, mofue. No difficile. <laughs> I have an online personal training business. As far as internet is concerned, where would be the safest and best place for me to relocate to my wife? And I also homeschool our kids. Um, uh, I think I answered that question before. I think um, <clears throat> if, you're leaving, if, you're, if you're leaving uh, the first world uh, and moving to Haiti, your best bet probably is somewhere in Port-au-Prince or Cap Haitien. In terms of uh, overall infrastructure, uh, and 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 or you consider um, Jacques Mel and uh, and Okai as well potentially as 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 alternatives, but the big the big cities is really where you want to go uh, if you're if you're moving to Haiti. Right. Best of luck to you, brother. Best of luck to you if you do decide doing uh, going that path and do and do do it slowly. As I open up before you know moving to Haiti, you know engaging in Haiti is something you want to do um, not out of emotion. Um, but out of a strategic um, sense, right? Even though at the end of the day, it is going to be emotion, <laughs> emotional, but do it. Don't, don't just wake up overnight and say, hey, I'm moving to 80, right? Certainly you want to um, do it the right way, especially since you have a family and for their um, long-term uh, security and safety and growth, you want to do it slowly and carefully, right? So certainly over a year, you want to visit, visit Haiti as many times as you can to re-engage the culture, re-engage the opportunities, network, um, and do it the right way. Okay. Edwin William. Yo, yo, Merry Christmas. Happy new year. Good to see you in the stream, brother. Good to see you in the stream. Um, that's right, man. The fish. That's right. My liberté financière. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Good to see you, uh, today waiting for, uh, politician to change our lives. is like waiting for Santa Claus to bring you gifts. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, generates annoying real life. Uh, certainly, uh, yeah, certainly. I we're waiting for for the energy sector to improve. We do have a new story to, to report on uh, here in a moment. Uh, is anyone working on uh, growing on rice in Haiti? Uh, not too sure. I answer that. I can, uh, do I understand that question? But yes, there is a very large sector of Haitian domestic producers of rice, but it's it's, it's very difficult for them to grow uh, for many many reasons, right? Um, let's see. We got gold 2020 2018 saying I think. I think the neo-colonial framework of bringing in foreign businesses and low wages is not what's going to help Haiti. It's a very good thing. Parliament raised wages. All right. That's, that's, that's a lot to unpack there. A lot to unpack there. Uh, and I have a lot of news to cover, so I can't really spend as much time as I would want on that. But, but go 2020. Uh, here's my question to you, brother. Okay. Show me... Uh, and I, I, I would highly recommend you read a book, by the way, uh, Trade Night Aid by Daniel Jill Louis, okay, um, which really contextualizes a lot of things specific to Haiti, right? And his most recent book, Trade to Self-Sustainability as well, right? So do check those books out, right? 
uh, just all I'm saying is show me <laughs> one example in the history of the world where there hasn't been a transitional form of economic development where you have these sort of low wage sort of jobs, right? And, and foreign investment comes in and then over a course, and usually it's not even, you know, historically it's been only a decade, within a decade, as long as that can happen, happen sustainably, you have a shift of the economy where the majority of these people can, can you know, the, the population can then get, you know, white collar, larger wage jobs after the investment has come in and, and other sectors have been able to grow because of that initial growth in that manufacturing sector, right? And and, and can look past and, and start shifting those jobs out of their economy and focus on higher growth, higher yield sort of jobs opportunities, right? Show me an instance when that didn't happen, where folks were able to hopscotch and say, hey, we're a, you know, a complete poor country and woke up one day and said, hey, guess what? We were able to skip and all the poor people in our country, I don't know what we did with them. We did something with them, but now everybody who's highly educated, we all have jobs now and we're all good and kumbaya, right? Show me one instance of that, right? Put down your textbook, <laughs> put down your communist manifesto <laughs> for a second, right? And and just show me one real world example of that happening. And and I, and I, will, pre I will thank you, I will appreciate you because uh, that will certainly start my journey in seeing the world in a different way, right? Um, the reality is for a guy who studied economics, undergraduate and graduate, uh, an economy in transition uh, with a high population like Haiti has, their greatest uh, benef uh, resource is the amount of people who exist who are willing to work uh, uh, jobs that Though to you and me, we can sit and just number our nose on, but just even though I've, I've said found a good is a bit low per day for for a wage, but the alternative is either zero or fifty or hundred or two hundred fifty good, you know, working all day selling stuff on the street as a mama sea, right? Or driving a beat up top top and in the streets with holding cash and being robbed. Um, in, in broad daylight, because you know when you're when you're known to be in a, in an industry that you're you have cash, you're right. You, you will be a target, right? So as an example, our moto driver, where you know your risk of being killed, you know transporting someone in the back of your 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 motorbike is exceptionally high, right? Given the crazy wild wild west of of, of traffic conditions in Haiti, right? So, you know, I, you know, so that's that's where I'm gonna end. I won't go any further than that. Um, but, you know, you hear a lot of this stuff from people uh, living very comfortably in in the first world, saying, "Oh, I can't believe it." Uh, and I'm, I'm, I, I look forward to hearing his Gold 2020's response, uh, showing me one instance of a country that was able to hopscotch that sort of progression. I look forward to hearing your response. Right. Uh, so we've got Jacques George saying uh, the increase in textile exports may be a mirage when you consider who actually owns the textile companies. Are those dollars not going to the country anyway? I'm not too sure what you mean. Um, uh, ownership of an entity doesn't necessarily matter when it's 100 percent being staffed by uh, Haitians, when, it, when the uh, investment is being the investment in the facilities are physically in Haiti, when the skills and resources uh, are being retained by Haitians uh, and the money uh, when it comes to the costs, i.e. The, the salaries are staying in country um, by the employees. Uh, and additionally to uh, other very good effects that include um, usually, you know, from one, for example, Coracol, right? You know, to get that particular center going, roads had to be, had to be constructed, electricity, um, grids had to be uh, uh, constructed and maintained uh, and the tax benefit coming from those sort of investments uh, are, are providing the state resources to be able to invest and grow. So I'm not too sure what you mean, um, Jacques, um, but the dollars are certainly, uh, a good amount of the dollars are, are going in the country uh, and um, and being reinvested as other companies 
uh, are able to recognize profit, you know, they will attract other companies to do the same. And the name of the game, honestly, uh, is one word, right? Is jobs, G O B S, one word, right? And and you bring jobs in by allowing foreign companies to be able to come in and invest uh, and keep some of their profits. I mean, you know, to to, to a large extent, right? But so long as uh, jobs are being created uh, and Haitians are getting those jobs, right? That is the name of the game, and that's how the country changes, right? Because a lot of the things that Haiti suffers from health care, from a lack of electricity, um, lack of pollution, for the trash collection. It's all because there are no jobs and people can't afford uh, uh, to pay for those things and the state can't afford to provide it because who, who, who's going to pay for those things, right? And where is that come, coming from if it's not from folks with jobs paying taxes, right? But anyways, but I appreciate the comments. I appreciate the comments. You know, it's uh, always contentious to to have folks come in and and, uh, and 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 get that sort of information to them, and and their perspectives will come to light about uh, what they feel is the right way to go about things. But um, you know, I, I, just, I just it's just simple. Give me the historic. Give me the history. <laughs> give me one instance where it didn't happen that way, and uh, and you, I'll be a converter. I'm certainly open to changing my changing my ideals uh, if you can just show me the facts and figures behind it right so we got jacques george jacques continue up um so there are right there are uh the majority are coming from countries that uh have been doing textiles for much longer than us uh including asia bangladesh india right and and, and for many reasons their expertise uh, is is far far better than what a domestic Haitian could be able to produce because of their uh, because of the uh, uh, infrastructure that they have not only in their own countries coming into it, but um, the executive management that they're able to hire, right? And and of course my response always is right when you hear folks saying stuff like that is you know what are you doing, <laughs> right? If so if you feel so passionate about this particular subject because I. I you know, even though I'm here for, in the States for the holidays, I live in Haiti. I have employees. I, I'm doing things, right? I'm not just a guy typing furiously on the internet or just doing a, a live and expressing an opinion. I'm a guy in the country doing stuff. So my question to you, Jacques George, you know, if you feel so passionately about the, uh, you know, what you've expressed, buy a few, um, buy a few, uh, what do you call that? What do you think the things I call it, they make them? Thing that makes the uh the clothes what is that the little machines that uh are actually able to sew to get sewing machine there we go sewing machines you know buy buy a few sewing machines all right and 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 be the change you want to see man right pay you know you know pay four or five times the wage um of what other people are, are paying right and uh and push forward right and be that change man right yeah, you know, and that's and that's my big thing. <laughs> I'm I'm being serious. You know, be that change. Uh, let's see what else. What else? What else? What else? Haitian French looks like Quebec French. Yeah, then the French French absolutely, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, drop shipping. Okay, drop shipping. Yeah, I think my I think you mentioned that, but again, you're you're stateside, right? So much much easier to do, right? Um, Lita Midget says when you think about it, how are these businesses. Let's run swiftly without corrupt government looking to interfere. Exactly, exactly. That's part of the reasons why uh, drop shifting is tricky. Um, you must have read the book, book for work week. Uh, okay, let's see. A little midget does a category uh, big time. Uh, drop shifting, these conversations are happening in the chat here. Some conversations happening in the chats here. Um, I like this question here by AA. Why aren't we doing more exporting uh, of things such as mangoes and, and other things? Uh, and that's a great question, right? That's something that you know we don't we're not having enough internal investment um, from uh, our people um, to do, right? And that's certainly something that um, uh, there's incredible opportunity for uh, people. Who you know? I know a lot of folks who have land in Haiti and 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 they're looking to branch off into business opportunities, 
And certainly, you know, uh, agriculture is as incredible opportunity. Now there's, there's difficulties that exist obviously in that market, um, that, you know, a quick plug, pre-plug, uh, 101 ways to make money in Haiti. will uh, talk about, <laughs> we don't have necessarily time to talk about it here on cast, but that is certainly, uh, one of the opportunities that exist, um, continuously, you know, uh, you know, small, and I know, uh, anecdotally, uh, of people who have gone in and started farms um, from the diaspora. And, and honestly, they've made so much money, they haven't even had to export. They're just selling domestically, right? And they're making money hand over fist, right? Um, but of course, you know, those sort of stories are, are, are washed out um, because folks are so focused on the political aspect of the country. Right, but great, great uh, comment there. AA, uh, delicate dance. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Right, it's absolutely delicate dance. Uh, EV says that China was a great model to follow. They went from poverty to superpower in a, in a few decades. Right, absolutely. Um, and and also uh, EV also mentions the DR. Absolutely. Um. Conversation back and forth. We got David Bassett here in the chat. Good, good, good afternoon. What's up? What's up? Right. Uh, what is the biggest obstacle to launching a national service program to mobilize unemployed? Um, that sounds like it involves a state. And the last time Haiti had done something like that, it was called the Tonto Makuts. <laughs> so, uh, color me a little bit uh, pessimistic on Haitian state mobilizing to do anything. To be quite honest with you, uh, I am much more advocating private actors uh, coming together and uh, and and functioning uh, through pri private um, channels to employ and and drive the country forward. Right? We got Mans Mansa Musa saying Rwanda is also a great country to follow. Haiti needs to get rid of that corrupt president, though. Right? Right? Comment there. Right? Um, and all right, so I think I swear I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna reengage the news, and unfortunately I don't see gold. I, I, I really went through this to see if gold would give me a response. <laughs> gold, where you at, man? Don't tell me you left the stream. I'm waiting for your response, man. Give me one example of a country that was able to leave poverty and be a middle income to almost advancing country, right? that did not have to shuffle through the early phase of, of, of these sort of manufacturing industrial sort of jobs, you know, that within a decade we're able to change and folks are able to leave, you know, China's leaving that behind, right? Vietnam is leaving that behind. India is leaving that behind. Bangladesh is leaving that behind. Right. Right. Gold, where you at, man? <laughs> let, let me move on. Let me move on. But this, don't, 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 let, let me tell you, I told you so. I will, I will, I, I do, I will say it, right? You know, there isn't, you know, a way through economic development without, you know, a focus, at least initially, on these sort of manufacturing jobs that will allow our low-skilled employee, uh, people, population to find work and and ultimately take their kids to school and, and, and allow them, the next generation, to be able to be qualified for the next wave of op uh, opportunities that exist in a developing and growing economic economy that these sort of opportunities, jobs, industries provide, right? So let's keep going. There was a sand mine disaster that happened last week, uh, six dead in Miraguan, right? Uh, sand mine collapse, uh, which is devastating and very sad. We've, uh, and, and those who've been in Haiti, I'm sure you've seen, especially as you travel uh, outside the city, uh, there's these very, there's these big, like they eat into the, the sides of mountains and, and what they're doing is they're collecting sand. And these, these sands are slightly higher of higher quality, um, uh, to, uh, the sand that you get other in other places. And, and, and that sand is and sand and rocks. They're used to, they're used to, um, in construction, right? Uh, now, as you can imagine, a lot of these are unregulated and are done very without, uh, safety equipment uh, and is uh, are subject to collapses. Uh, I, I want to call them mudslides per se because there's no mud or rain involved, but rain could sometimes weaken certain foundational parts of 
um, these mines. With, they're outdoor mines, but they're mines. And deaths occur. Oftentimes, um, it's never been as many as six in one in one uh, disaster. Um, but uh, in this case, six happened. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, there's calls for you know the government to do its job to regulate the safety of these of these operations and close down those who aren't operating in a manner that uh, is safe. Uh, of course, we're better off holding our breath on that. Um, but just uh, just something a new story to, to bring in mind. Uh, very, a very important business news story to bring in mind is that as we drive around and we see these sort of things as needed and necessary as they are, uh, they aren't safe and they aren't done by regulation. Certainly, please, you know, ask when you're visiting, uh, stay the heck away from a mine. Um, yeah, it's, it's not it's not a safe place. Right? It's certainly a sad story to report, um, but it is uh, a important aspect to consider. Next news story has to do with transport costs. Transport costs in Port-au-Prince is up. Transport costs in Port-au-Prince is up is up by 20 to 67% for some routes um, from 15 good to 25 good, uh, 15 good to 20 good in some places, um, not formally sanctioned. A lot of these increases are not formally sanctioned um, by the state. Um, it's the association of drivers who have uh, decided to do this increase in response to uh, statements that include um, uh, reasons that include the price of oil increasing, the price of tires increasing, uh, the price of parts increasing because of depreciation of good, um, and the fact that a lot of them have been affected very, very drastically by the recent protests, and and, the, and there needs to be a price adjust, a, adjustment for the amount of uh, uh, new reality to the economic uh, conditions that they're facing. Um, and, and some of the drivers who were choosing to follow what the state guidelines are in terms of pricing, um, have reports of bullying, uh, and, um, uh, organized violence towards them. Right. But it's important to note that, uh, aspect uh, transport costs are up, uh, and are looking to uh, stay up in the immediate future. Uh, again, costs are up by 20 to 67 percent, uh, which again, by the way, uh, transport costs are one of the highest costs for people in uh, Haiti rel relative to the income that they're making. Uh, it's up, uh, it's usually as, as high as 30 percent to 40 percent sometimes of their income uh, goes to transportation costs. So certainly it's a problem. Uh, and, uh, and this isn't good news for the uh, working um, people of the country, right? Uh, additionally, we have a uh, news related to not necessarily business news, but certainly when it relates to the nation that, uh, the national coach, of uh, Haiti football, Mark Collat, Mark Collet, Mark Collet, I don't know if you can say, um, uh, may not be returning. And now, uh, if you remember last year, we, uh, Haiti had an incredible run of, with the gold cup, uh, incredible run. We beat Canada. Um, uh, we beat, uh, what was that team? Was it Chile? Um, uh, the South American team. Was it Costa Rica? So somebody in the chat will, will, will refresh my memory. Uh, and finally, we lost in an incredible overtime game against Mexico, which a lot of people uh, say, even Mexicans have said, we should have won. Uh, a lot of, you know, we've, we've uh, it was an unfortunate awarded penalty from a ref. And, and we lost one to zero in overtime, right? And so the team has been playing incredibly well. Um, and CONCAF, we also had a very, very strong showing. Uh, Mark Colas, Colette's uh, overall record has been nine wins, four draws, six losses, 37 goals, and uh, uh, four versus 24 against. Uh, and and uh, But unfortunately, uh, for the 69-year-old coach, um, it seems as if the, um, the uh, FHH, F, the federal, um, the Haitian Football League, Federated Haitian Football League, uh, can they can't come into agreement on payment, on uh, you know how compensation, which is very unfortunate. Um, certainly, I, you know I think we all could could agree the man has done incredible an incredible job, and uh, certainly merits whatever he may be asking. Um, in terms of a salary increase. Um, but 
we also understand uh, the reality of Haiti is, you know, you know, funding is is is, an, is, is is has always been for every department an incredible difficulty and issue, right? And so um, we are uh, hoping that uh, there might be a last minute agreement uh, between the coach and um, and the national football team. Um, but we have to be ready for, for, for that. Right. And certainly that will be, um, uh, I really don't want that to happen. <laughs> you know, again, we've been doing incredibly, you know, great, uh, and, and, and the, the unity that the football, our football team has done. I mean, see, I'm, me seeing Haitians in New York and Haitians in France and Haitians in Canada. And then we were winning how there was rah-rahs in the street and white people were like, wait, wait a minute, what? What is this? What is this? What, what's this stuff? <laughs> what's this rah rah stuff? And the cultural benefit uh, of of a national team uh, has done right. Um, I think um, certainly um, pay the man, <laughs> pay the man. You know, it's, it's incredibly important to allow Mark to continue to do the incredible work he's done. So pay the man. Okay. Uh, our next news story has to do with Bunch. Bunch is reopened, right? Incredibly good news. Now what Bonge is, Bonge has uh, a uh, incubator um, uh, in addition to uh, offers entrepreneurs in Haiti um, uh, space. You can rent out desks, right? And space to a shared workspace. They have a shared workspace program where, where they can, um, uh, uh, for a very nominal amount, um, you know, have access to, you know, some of the Haiti's fastest internet, right? Um, and also have a lot of benefits included, including um, access to some of Haiti's top executives, uh, mentorship programs, funding, uh, opportunities to work uh, with teams across the world. They have a, a, a development coding, several development coding programs as well. Um, and uh, they've been doing incredible work, not only one-on-one uh, -on -one with, with entrepreneurs in the country. But in terms of the image of Haiti, uh, Bonge has been really on the forefront of, of initiatives that include uh, the Haiti Tech Summit that's happened, it's been happening every year, uh, regardless of what's been happening on the ground. They've been on there. They've been bringing relationships that include Google, Facebook, Airbnb, um, uh, uh, and, and acting as facilitators uh, of of the technological environment in the country and, and pushing native, most importantly, pushing native domestic apps um, uh, and opportunities. Uh, and, and unfortunately, during the past um, political instability, they were uh, a, targeted um, by protesters and looted uh, completely. Uh, and even there was even fire uh, on the facility of their of their Delco and generators, which was very heartbreaking, um, and certainly, um, uh, whew, uh, you know, for those who who are looking who are looking to uh, say, I told you so about uh, investing in a country, because you know, first thing you hear, oh, you're investing in Haiti, oh, oh, oh they're gonna burn your business down, and no, 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 they had they had their fuel in their fire, right? They had they had uh, their aha moment uh, when when Bonj experienced what they experienced. Um, but it's, it's, I'm happy to report that uh, there was a very organized effort to help get Bonj back. Um, they were able to raise up to $33,000 on GoFundMe. Uh, I pushed their GoFundMe uh, quite a bit uh, on, on our streams. Those who know, especially when I was doing uh, our Haiti Biz News daily, uh, you know I was talking about them and their GoFundMe each day. And uh, it's, it's come, it comes with a great happiness that uh, we can share the news that Bunch has been back up, right? Uh, they were able to reopen last week. Um, and a lot of their uh, larger corporate partners redoubled down their support for Bunch from Shoji Bank, from Access IT, um, from other um, big institutional players in the country. Um, and uh, the, you know, several dozen to you know, almost 100 folks that have been a part of this institution uh, are able to going to be able to re-engage and uh, get back to work, right? From entrepreneurs, 
from the support uh, team to uh, a lot of the businesses that were there uh, helping uh, support the entrepreneurs, uh, a lot of the partners internationally that were helping with it. Um, we're all able to say, you know, we're back. <clears throat> of course, so some of the big changes that uh, you'll see uh, with Bonds is that they've built a very large wall <laughs> right in front of their complex, uh, 13 feet to be in fact, um, because of where they're located, uh, they're located right on Route Del Mar, which is, I mean, when, when things get hot, when protests happen, that is where, I mean, that's the artery way. That is the main, whenever you've seen Haiti and, and these big swelling of people going down a lot of street, nine times out of 10, it's that street, Route Del Mar. And there go, these guys are located right there. And it, it doesn't take but one vagabond, one thug to change the flow of anger, frustration to anything, right? And unfortunately, uh, they weren't too well secured um, previously. And uh, we believe now there should be uh, certainly a lot more secured, the 13 foot wall <laughs> there on the facility. And uh, and so again, uh, we're, we're certainly looking forward to Bonge's newer initiatives. We look forward to seeing Bonge continue to grow. Um, you know, hopefully, I, I can get I can do a CGNT on location on Bonge. In fact, we had you know between you know, this I'm good sure we had something <laughs> planned actually um, uh, to do with Bonge uh, the CGNT on location, but unfortunately, one thing led to another. Uh, we couldn't do it. And the very next week, or maybe two weeks later. You know, the bond was, was burnt, right? Um, but so hopefully in the coming year, we'll be able to do some bond. You guys will be able to see firsthand what bond has been doing. Um, some of the entrepreneurs that are, are there. Um, so do look out for that. And and and, and by the way, bond isn't the only sort of incubator workspace style. There's a lot of, there's not a lot, but there's a, a, few, a few others. Uh, and, and we'll certainly be looking to highlight them as well and see just down location. Um, and one in particular, one very soon. Uh, I want to keep that in wraps a little bit, but one very soon we'll be able to uh, talk about uh, uh, in the coming month of January, uh, early February. So do look out for that. And again, you know, you know, these sort of things are very in line with what we're about here on CGNT, which is uh, engaged in entre entrepreneurship and, and mobilizing people to um, win, uh, mobilizing uh, ideas uh, and uh, success, right? And and the and these. You know, sort of workspace incubators um, are, are are doing that, right? And so it, it's a natural progression to kind of you know just highlight and show that. So do look forward to that. I'm very excited, very looking forward to those upcoming episodes of CGNT. Okay, all right. And, it, and also we do want to talk about the uh, you know, re resayas, resayas, um, you know, R E S A C E. Uh, we mentioned uh, this incubation program. Uh, back on December 1st, um, uh, we just want to qu give a quick update. Um, uh, again, what, what that is, it's a solidarity network for support of business creation. They had a, a program and, um, and, they're, and they're supported by uh, a, the Franco Phony University, uh, um, Focal, Central Bank of Haiti, where after incubation of a period of six months, uh, there will be a selection uh, and uh, six programs will be selected to receive ten thousand dollars, ten thousand USD, to help launch their businesses, right? And a full list. Uh, so the full list of the twenty-five projects selected have been announced, and will be starting in January. Uh, and you'll find the that in the link of those sort of businesses uh, in the description, in the in the links of the in the description. Uh, and again, they run the gamut um, from I saw some stuff in like honey producers. Um, I saw um, some uh, some other agricultural producers. I had some other folks, you know, more located in the clothing and marketing. Uh, I did see an even app developer on there. So you know, they were in the gamut in terms of different styles of businesses. And certainly, those are the businesses we'll keep an eye out. And, and hopefully, you know, of the six that are selected, uh, I will try to you know reach out, connect with them, and, and I would love to be able to do uh, to highlight them on on my on my channel on my network so you guys can know what's going on and, and some of the businesses you can additionally support. Right. And so do look out for that. Certainly I'm, you know, I'm, I'm keeping a close tabs on this program and, and some of the um, um, uh, winners uh, of, of this incubation program. Next new story has to do with auto Mecca. Auto Mecca is opening a brand new showroom in Patronville. Uh, it's a, um, it's going to be a little smaller than um, 
their uh, show their main space uh, near uh, near the airport. Auto America, for those who don't know, are authorized sellers of Isuzu, Subaru, and Volvo. Uh, and this is uh, supposed to be the, one of the first or perhaps second uh, showrooms that exist in Petroville. Why it's important is, uh, you know, the, the price range for these uh, vehicles, brand new vehicles, are, are relatively affordable, um, uh, ranging from price points of $32,000 to $44,000. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's important um, in particular as relates to um, access. Access to is one of the bigger things um, that affects the quality of traffic in the country is access to quality vehicles, right? Because you know you, you, you're in Haiti long enough, and you'll you'll find that uh, you're in a, you're in a, uh, a you know a parking garage. <laughs> the streets become parking garages when one car breaks down, right? Um, and so that's certainly good news. Certainly good news for uh, as an indicator of where the opportunity lies, and the fact that uh, you know we we have this uh, company. Um, growing in, in, in a time that is supposed to be very difficult is indicative that that particular uh, niche uh, is something folks sh could consider and should consider, um, i.e. the importation of cars to sell, right? Our next new story has to do with electricity project in Cap Haitien. Um, I think we mentioned, we did talk about this recently, but very loosely. Uh, we do have a much more focused uh, parts to announce, which has to do with how these, you know, the, the electricity is going to be generated. 40 megawatts of natural gas power plant uh, is going to be built in addition to 16 megawatt solar electricity plant, right? Which is very good news, right? Uh, to the fact that we have green energy and green energy out of about a very large amount, 40 megawatts of natural gas. That is ex you know, exceptional. And then 16 megawatt solar electricity panel. And now this is a 22 altogether. These are a 22 million dollar funding uh, project, and and the funding is coming from the IDB and the and USAID. Uh, for those who 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 may <laughs> hold the belief that these sort of institutions do nothing positive, um, you know, this is coming from the IDB and the USAID. And selection of the construction company is going to be announced uh, uh, in the coming month, January 2020. Once we do have more information on that, we will share that information. Um, and I can tell you again, um, this is exactly, you know, one of the things, you know, that uh, I can tell you uh, from, from contacts I have um, within institutions like the USAID and IDB is that uh, the problem isn't necessarily that these institutions haven't backed these sort of programs in the past, but the fact that there hasn't been any initiative from the government to ask for those, for these sort of uh, programs, projects, and infrastructure opportunities, uh, particularly in funding. You know, hate them or love them, right? Uh, President Moise has been very clear uh, since he first announced the 24-24-7 project um, that, you know, he wants electricity, right? And has more or less, uh, mo has mobilized institutions like IDB and USAID to help him in that regard, in addition to partners, global partners like Taiwan. Now you see, I'm not a Joe now hater. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, this is not, I'm a guy. This, if he does good work, I'll report the good work. <laughs> this isn't, you know, we're not we're not one side or the other. We're the pro Haiti side, right? Whichever side is doing progr progress, verifiable, non corruptive progress in the country, we're going to report it and we're going to tip your hat in the messy <laughs> to whoever player and actor is doing that work, right? So let's just be clear. Right. I am. We're here. We're team Haiti. We're not team any political party. Let's be very clear. OK. And finally, the last new story has to do with Maduro restarting the Petro Caribe program. Uh, Maduro uh, is going to uh, next year, 2020, reboot that. But Jovenel has made it clear that uh, his administration will not be a part of uh, the Petro Caribe program uh, in any form. Uh, and additionally, even if uh, his administration or the next administration is, uh, it's going to be very difficult because the, one of the main conditions of participating in the program is that the, uh, oil comes directly from the state and, and all oil must come from the state, um, that's dealing with the Petrico Caribe program. And 
uh, we've since removed that structure. Uh, the, uh, the, the distributors uh, in the country no longer have to get it from BMPod. They can get it directly from the, from the U.S. international market. Uh, and given the pains that existed, one of the reasons why we, we went through these recent protests is because of the pains related to the shifting of, of BMPod as the main oil distributor to the oil distributors, uh, the private oil distributors. Um, I, I mean, there is no will, I, I don't believe, by any administration, no matter how pro Venezuelan one may be, to reshift and reengage in that um, again and put the country in a position where if that program were to end as it did to, uh, you know, basically experience what we've experienced. So for those two reasons, um, we don't, we don't necessarily expect Haiti to be a part of that program anytime soon. And don't forget, you know, Haiti and the U S um, the U S you know, uh, whoever, which administration actually decides to reengage with Venezuela will be heavily reprimanded by the U.S. government. And one of the reasons why Rene Preval um, and his party uh, incite, uh, or was it Unity? Yeah, so Unity, et voila, Unity, or, uh, that's what it was, Unity, excuse me, Unity, uh, was more or less oisted um, from the election uh, that brought Martelly into power, despite that um, Celestin, his handpicked successor, successor, uh, Rene Preval's handpicked successor, was very popular and actually had uh, more votes uh, than Maitali at the time um, uh, was was uh, can clandest clandestinely removed from uh, being able to participate in additional rounds uh, was because of the fact that the that party um, did go against the very clear <laughs> prerogative of the U.S. government uh, of no one you know work and participate with uh, the government of Ch Ch um, uh, Chavez and, um, and Maduro, right? So, but important news to announce. And, and again, from just a personal perspective, you know, the fact that we've proven that we can't handle <laughs> um, those funds, the fact that so much of that money um, and the output of what could have been done uh, is non-existent. There is no hospitals. There, there isn't. There is very few uh, road construction that we can point to. Uh, we can't really count how many schools have been built. Um, versus when you go to Dominican Republic, you can see that they built, you know, uh, some metro trains with that money. They built um, telephonics with that money. Um, actual real work was done with that money. Um, schools were built with that money. Uh, instead, in Haiti, we just have a lot of debt. And a big old monument to failure in Kafu, a big old injunction that exists that uh, hasn't been touched, despite the fact that it was reported multi millions of dollars and did go out for that little set of two pillars <laughs> over in Kafu intersection. Those who know know what I'm talking about, right? So that's the news stories for today, right? Uh, we did have quite a bit to go through, and uh, that's when I saw we were about an hour and fifteen in, and I hadn't even got through half. I decided to just double down and focus on reporting these stories, right? Uh, so, and very interesting. And again, these are about two weeks worth of stories. Um, so let's let's take a, take a look at the comments, see what folks are saying, right? Let's go up. Let's see what folks are saying. Let's see. Let's go up and see what folks are saying. Let's go up. Okay, there we go. There we go. Um, let's see. Claude Claudia Francis says, uh, "Bring back." Bring the drone back. Oh, yeah, trust me, in the back, the drone, the drone's been here. The drone's been involved. <laughs> the drone's been involved. Certainly, we're looking to do a droning in Haiti uh, additional episode, certainly. Um, but I would like to go to new places. You know, that's one of the goals of this year. Um, go, to, go to some new places in the country, including Jacques Mail, including Okai, um, places I haven't had a document yet. So we'll see. We'll see if we can get, create, you know, figure out some ways to fund those trips. Because as always, you know, everything I do is out of my own pocket, right? And so to be able to go to Jack Man Okai, you know, we would need because, uh, you know, I have to pay for my media team, you know, transportation, lodging and food when we do go out of town like that. And so uh, those costs are currently prohibitive 
of me being able to do so those those things but we'll, we'll see we'll see how things drop and how things fall and we'll certainly see how things go from that perspective right um so you know evie certainly uh had some gen genuine uh, opinion on some some things i was saying um let's see we got go 2020 saying uh, here's the response i was waiting for so gold 2020 says it's a loaded question because industrialization was funded by slavery and i only and i only get 120 words to type that set of standard example for 20th century uh it's possible to develop without without slavery okay okay um so i'm not i wasn't saying anything about slavery right um i'm talking specifically about the low wage comment you said Right, uh, and simply asking you to give one example. <laughs> That's all. Right. So let's see. Let's see what Go Twenty Twenty saying. Uh, continuing with, uh, it's possible to develop without slave wages. China didn't do what IMF was telling it to do. What they did was steal Western technologies. Okay. That's not what happened. There were countless, hundreds of thousands of. Uh, Chinese workers uh, working in sweatshops and in and, and very difficult conditions, to be quite honest with you. Um, but that lasted about a decade. And, and even during that decade, you did see improvements in working conditions and wages and to the point where today um, it's, it's very, very different. And though very large... Um, uh, facilities exist that employ many, many Chinese, but you're seeing now they're, they're getting a very substantial wage with a very substantial uh, improvement in their working conditions. But that wouldn't have been possible without that first wave of of of, uh, of industrialists um, and and wages that, though in your perspective, is very low relative to what these you know, these folks could make in the economy domestically, they're making double that, right? Double to triple that, I can tell you. Um, the opportunities are slim. The opportunities that exist are very weak in, in providing um, uh, income. And though from your perspective, from where you may live, that's low. I can tell you as someone who's in Haiti, you know, the, the opportunities for, for jobs are slim and the few that exist are very low. And so when you get somebody who can make three to four times that, um, that is something that is a good thing, <laughs> right? And again, yeah, Gold, you still haven't given me one example. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think, I think, I think I don't, I think I'm going to stop engaging you uh, because I think you've proven my point, right? And, you know, you, you can't give me one concrete example of one that didn't exist like that. And so until you do, when you do, when, when you're ready to, to give me that concrete example, we can continue this conversation, right? So let's see what else we got here. We got, um, let's see, let's keep going. Tamara, Tamara Jimenez, good to see you. Good to see you. Happy to, to, happy to have you, even though you're late. <laughs> happy to see you. Um, certainly the soccer issues, is, is, is uh, soccer news it was very sad, um, certainly. Um, we certainly do hope that uh, Mark Colette is able to, uh, you know, get an opportunity to continue coaching. He's been he's doing a great job. Um, Pierre Paul says, uh, I'm glad that this is up and we'll be running again. I'm glad also that, uh, there is going to be a 54 megawatt, uh, project, electric project soon in the North. Did I mention where it was? It's in the North of OCOP, by the way. I'm not sure if I mentioned that specifically when I was talking about that. Um, I've been paying a lot of Haiti news. It's important to know, uh, know this so we can mobilize our ideas and concentrate investments. Absolutely. And that's why we're here. That's why we are here. Absolutely. Um, can a Haitian American try to become president of Haiti uh, legally? Nope. <laughs> um, uh, if you're if you're a citizen of another country, uh, the most you can ever become in Haiti right now, per the current constitution, is a mayor. But, but you cannot hold any ministry, any chef, uh, uh, head of departments roles. You know, for example, you can't be um, head of minister of culture. You can't be head of minister of um, anything. You know, finance, economics. You can't. Yeah, if you hold a passport, or if you're a citizen of another country, right? Um, even though you can still vote and you can still do other things, uh, if you are of Haitian nationality, because of a 2011 uh, modification to uh, the the Haitian laws, right? 
Um, Okay, any any uh, news about Haiti implementing a new government uh, constitution? I did talk about at the start of the newscast, uh, and the short answer is no. <laughs> Jovenel Moise isn't going anywhere, right? That's the short of it, uh, as it stands right now. Uh, and certainly um, the next opportunity to amend the constitution to allow, uh, at the very least, what I'm what I am um, passionate about, uh, which is the more involvement, more direct involvement of the Haitian diaspora, in the political environment, because again, you're being taxed, you're being dependent on um, economically. The Haitian diaspora sends over three billion dollars in remittances, almost you know, from some estimates, four billion dollars in remittances. Um, but yet, we are you know, uh, you know, not allowed to represent ourselves in any particular way. Um, certainly, um, amendments need to happen to not only allow, not just allow the Haitian diaspora to run for any office. You know, that that's not. You know, at the very least, if we can get representation, example, Dominican Republic, there are two sitting parliamentarians, I want to say senators, that exist in their system that exist only to represent the diaspora. They're, they have a they have a, a senator, a senator for like New York. Right. They have a senator for like literally North Northern America. They have a senator that represents Northern American uh, Dominican Republic citizens and also or nationals. And, and also they have a, uh, a representative in parliament that represents everyone else, right? Um, and, and that's to ensure that despite, despite the fact that, you know, money coming in also gets taxed, but they are being represented and do have a seat at the table and all Dominicans are being um, uh, considered when laws and actions are being done. And more importantly, taps into the uh, the skill set and the intelligence and the capacity and the productivity of Dominicans living all across the world, right? And and that's what is needed also uh, in Haiti. The fact that when you have eighty percent, eighty percent of your educated, productive peoples living outside the country, there's a massive problem. That's a problem, and and you need to be able to tap into that productivity. If Haiti has any chance of changing, any chance of actually growing itself, you have to uh, allow not just Haitians to be able to economically in incorporate, um, but also politically. I know that's hard. You're basically asking the very people who are, who have power to give up power, but we're hoping that at one of these days um, we'll have uh, candidates to vote for. And remember, you can vote as a, as a Haitian diaspora. You can actually vote. Uh, you know, it's, a little, it's, it's, it's not easy because you have to physically come to the country and get a Haitian electoral card and, and vote but just so you know, it can be done. And I think if, 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 if there can be, could be a movement that I could get behind, it would be a movement to get Haitian diaspora to register themselves in the country and then actually come to the country at the, at the next, next Haitian election and vote candidates in that are very clearly pl platforms to improve um, uh, and allow the diaspora to con to to voice themselves um, politically, right, and change the constitution. Now, the constitution, per the constitution, can only be changed in between um, seances, meaning um, you know the, the same um, parliament can't vote to amend the constitution. They can propose, they can vote in a proposal um, to change the constitution. But then after the next election, um, the new parliament coming in would then vote in to ratify that. And that's something that was done, again, all with the goal of preventing a, a new dictator. Um, one of the reasons why uh, uh, we had a Duvalier regime is that the past parliament was able to um, change the constitution, allow him to be president for life. And one of the, these positives of the new constitution um, it was it was very much anti -dictor dictator of a, of a potential executive branch, um, and so that's not very easy to do. So I want folks to be clear on that. But certainly, um, the first step of of modifying things to help tap into the strength of the diaspora is for the diaspora themselves to uh, understand that they have the power to vote. If you're Haitian national, if you're if you're if you're born in Haiti, or and or if, if, even if you're born somewhere else. If your mom's Haitian, then you can come in and, and get your electoral card, right? Is your dad Haitian? Then you come in and get your electoral card. That's it, right? You just have to be a Haitian national, right? And prove that your, your parents was, one of your parents were born in the country, 
and and that pro and you can start that process, right? All right. Um, so great, great uh, comment there, Nicholas. Nicholas, with that comment there. Um, and let's see. Let's keep on going. Let's see what else we have. Um, uh, we got Mark Mike Kizer saying Jovan was fine. It's the business people who are bringing them bringing the issues. That's one perspective, certainly. Uh, Pierre Paul referring to Bunge in that comment. Okay, all right, cool. You have uh, Kali Kaleheb. Monel, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you today. I haven't seen a comment from you earlier. Good to see you today. We have Jean Pierre. The country right now is in the negative in wages, so starting small will help start the ball rolling. Fully agree with you there. Uh, Evie uh, says, uh, I'm, "I'm with you, Chris." Uh, oops, I went, I went far. I went a little too far there. Let's see, where are you? Okay, there you go. I'm with you, Chris. Um, uh, any any political leader that is actually taking actual steps towards the country development that we can measure. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Certainly. And the president has been doing that. I can report on that. Let's see. Okay. Gold saying some stuff, but still not giving me <laughs> any hard example for what he's saying. So I can't really engage any further gold. I can't be talking to a wall. I have, I have better, productivity talking to this than talking to you right now <laughs> so moving on uh jean pierre says living in haiti uh, does not have to be uh seven yep you know talking about the wage question absolutely um um uh let's see evie says uh, it's easy for some to criticize but not easy to actually do absolutely let's change the narrative fully agree with you there brother um thank you thank you thanks for the appreciation there evie appreciate it uh, Liz C says, uh, folks want the money, but not, uh, the opinion. Okay. Um, let's see. We've got Jamaicans in diaspora are pushing for this as well. Uh, in their diaspora. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't know how Jamaica is, is structured. Um, but if they don't have representation, they need to push for it as well. Um, uh, let's see. And Matsu Matsu Mansa Musa says, are there still laws nine foreigners from land ownership? Uh, back in the day, foreigners had to. I, I believe that's still the case. Yeah, that is still the case. Foreigners, um, I think foreigners can. They have limited own, uh, ownership rights. Um, uh, they can't uh, own land near government buildings. They can't own land near the border. Um, and even then, they have to do it through corporations. And and even in that corporation, um, there has to be a Haitian. A national on the board of that corporation for them to be able to own land. So there is a very long, arduous pro process uh, for a foreigner to own land, but it's it's pretty, pretty high, pretty difficult to be able to do. Right. Um, Tamara Jimenez says, uh, "Thanks for inform informative live chats. No problem. No problem. Thanks for watching. <laughs> that's the that's the real thing. I'm not just talking to myself. As I'm looking right now, we have over 41 people." In the live, and also a handful of folks also on the uh, the the Facebook uh, the IG stream. So now, thank you for for watching, guys. Certainly appreciate it. Certainly, and we got Milton Pierre uh, in there. Hi, right back to you, Milton. Sava, right? All right. So so that's where we're gonna end it uh, for the last um, uh, newscast of Haiti Biz News for 2019 of the decade. As I started this cast. To tell folks, I just wanted to give you guys one more thank you for for making uh, m m the time I spent worth it. I remember the very first time I did my live, uh, we had five people <laughs> concurrent watching, um, just five, just five people. Uh, and now consistently we get 30 to 40 people on the stream. Uh, and that, that says a lot because I'm not, you know, a pretty girl, you know, in skin tights, um, you know, just dancing and you know uh because that gets a lot of streams a lot of views <laughs> you know um you know and i'm not i'm not a guy like you know let me, let me not name names but i'm not uh, a guy who 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 just talks you know who's, who's bad mouthing people right who's uh capzi bitsies a creole right and that gets a lot of views too right i'm not i'm not like a certain <laughs> i think i think we, we know who i'm talking about right i'm not like that uh, and additionally, I'm not like other people who um, 
uh, only show the worst of Haiti. There's there's a lot of streams out there, very popular people who, who really um, have made a name for themselves, you know, going around uh, in lives and and then showing literally trash on the streets um, and just have made their brand about criticizing Haiti and, and not showing enough of the potentiality. And that gets a lot of views um, as well. Um, so but the fact that we're talking about substantial real issues and not just about the issues, but also how to move forward and that we're getting folks watching and engaged, um, you know, that really gives me hope <laughs> for not just Haiti, but humanity <laughs> as a whole. Right. Gives me hope for humanity as a whole. Right. Um, and and really shows what the power of social media can do when used right, when used in the right way, you know, social media can be really a force for change and impact. And, and so I want to thank you guys for, for giving me all those strings to wrap myself around as I move forward and, and really strategize in terms of how to move CGNT forward uh, in the coming year. So certainly thank you on that and certainly give you guys a pat on the back because, again, this thing only works if there's people engaged watching it and who care. So certainly thank you guys for watching, engaging and caring. Right. Uh, of course, um, I'm going to be updating the, the, the description below where we have uh, some two really cool uh, episodes of YouTube C Genty. That's a guys for you guys to check out if you haven't watched it yet. We had Fubar, we highlighted, um, which was really cool. I did with a go check out the nightlife there. So, if you haven't seen that episode, do you know, take take a look at it. We did do a rewind of C Genty on locations, uh, and um, you know, it was really cool to kind of put together all those things and, and sort of highlight some of the more memorable moments of each video. So if you haven't seen that video, uh, do check it out. Right. As always, you see the, the right below, you see Haiti biz news. You see that, you see that right there. Wait, it's going, it's going this way. You see that, you see that right there. Ooh. Oh, here's another one. You see that, you see that it's going right there. You see that <laughs> Haiti biz news.com. Right. So even during the week, um, uh, do make it a point to check that out. Right. Um, we go out to the Internet. Uh, we grab a bunch of new stories related to the business climate in the country. We translate it to English and, and put it to you in a format that is readable, legible, maintained. I like to think um, as a one stop shop uh, location. So do HaitiBizNews.com is a place that's available for you guys. Uh, so do check that site out uh, throughout the week. Uh, it's updated to the minute. Right. So, you, you you know, you always are getting quality news uh, stories there. And of course, do check out the source websites, too. A lot of these are some really great source websites that need some eyeballs, too. So don't hesitate to go to the source and and check out some more stuff related to the where we're getting uh, this information from. Right. And, and finally, of course, share the stream, share the stream. If you appreciated what we talked about today, whoo, two hours. <laughs> Two hours, Ugh. you know, but share the stream, nonetheless, you know, uh, for folks who are uh, going to be listening to this on the phone, driving, there's a lot of different ways to watch this a long stream um, and get the information. And uh, and so do share it. You know, if you found what you what we talked about today to be value added, um, if you gain some insight, if you gain some a perspective that you didn't think you would have had, if you didn't watch it, do please to share it, share it on your Facebook Share in your WhatsApp group. Um, let's get the word out that you know this exists and that we're we're doing this. Um, and and we're a part of that change. We're part of that that dynamic. You know, um, you know, you know, the, Haiti is a, is a river, right? And it changes slowly, surely, but we have to be consistent, right? We have to be consistent. Um, and of course, one drop of water isn't going to do a damn thing, but an entire stream of of water, damn well, you you you, you know damn well that that's going to you know, cause a change. And, and, and we were part of that swelling of water that's going to wash Haiti and bring a, a brand new, uh, brand new Haiti. Right. So that's where we're going to end it. Right. That's where we're going to end it. And, uh, and let me just do a quick, quick glance of what folks are saying here. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, thank you. Know, thank you, Liz. Thank you, Ebony. Thank you. AA uh, page payments. So we have, uh, you'll see in the description, I do have cash app <laughs> and I do have a Patreon as well. So uh, those who are, who feel so inclined, uh, feel free uh, and uh, certainly won't turn it down. You know, there's, you know, anything we can do. Um, I see PayPal you No, know, but you have, have yeah, square cash primarily. Uh, if you want to get just a one hit or quitter or Patreon, if you want to become a member, 
Um, and of course, those funds are, 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 are appreciated, certainly, you know, and uh, the goes to will go to, you know, paying my media team salary. Um, we'll go to buying new equipment. And if one day I can get that sort of um, donation to be more consistent, <clears throat> consistent, it might be even even be able to pay for, you know, going out of Pitchellville and, and, and really, you know, showing truly the, the, the coolest part of Haiti is the coolest part of Haiti. Oops. I think, uh, I think my stream ended there because there's a, there's a hard cap, like two hours for the stream <laughs> on, on IG. But, um, uh, certainly, uh, the, uh, you know, income would help creating some really awesome, awesome content. Uh, so certainly AA feel free, um, and, and, and provide your payment there if you're, if you're so inclined and that goes for anyone else. And then finally, and then par, par Parnell, Audrey. Hey, thanks, Chris, for conducting an English speaking show. Inform Haitian Aspinall. Thank you. Thanks for watching. And um, do we have a WhatsApp group? Not yet. Not yet. I, I need to stop being lazy and, and do that. But uh, no, not yet. But I'm certainly thinking about doing one. The thing is, I don't, I'm not going to have time to engage. If I'm going to do a WhatsApp group, I really want to, you know, engage it somehow or have someone engaged in, in moving and moving new stories from Haiti Biz News to the WhatsApp group. Um, and I don't have that resource yet. Um, uh, so, but then I'll start thinking about that and, and think about how we can make that a value added WhatsApp group. Cause I certainly don't want it to become just a spammy place that, um, isn't adding any value. Right. You know me, if I'm gonna do something, I want to do something right. And, and it needs to be productive. Right. But that's certainly something to think about. Um, certainly something to think about. I think I'll be thinking about it. All right. And, um, and finally, Jimmy Latouche says, uh, info on the farmers I mentioned. I don't think I mentioned farmers, but feel free to message me privately. Send me a DM or send me an email, Jimmy, and uh, I'll follow up with that. All right, guys, listen, it's been great. 2019 is in the books. <laughs> 2020 is going to happen. So, again, check out the show uh, next Sunday, 11 a.m. And, guys, until we're back at it again, we'll be back at it again. Take care.